If you've been following my social media accounts on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, you would have seen a video that I put up, which is very similar to what you're hearing and seeing now. This texture here is a really amazing experimental way to deal with music, drum, or percussion loops and really make them your own. And it utilizes the technology within Push 2 and also Ableton Live 9.6 to really give you control over twisting these loops up, transforming them in a number of different ways. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can create a custom instrument rack with a whole bunch of things that we can play around with and map to controllers. And don't feel that you need Push 2. This will work with Ableton Live and any MIDI controller. So before I build the custom instrument rack, just gonna show you, I've got a kick drum laid down here, so one for every beat. And that's because I didn't wanna use a metronome for a rhythmic reference point, okay? Let's come on to the first MIDI track, and I'm gonna push a device. You could do this from the software, of course, if you haven't got the push to unit. I'm gonna come down to instruments, and we're gonna use the rather significantly updated version of Simpler. And this was really updated um, to take advantage of push two in Ableton Live 9.6. Just gonna push browse to load a sample here. And I'm gonna use one of the samples that I used in the demonstration before. I'm gonna come down here to my sound library. And I've got a bunch of records that were kind of cut up. And um, this is where that Thomas Crown sample came from. And let me find that. Actually, got to say a big shout to Mark Robertson, Spiritual South, because um, it was he and I who were going through the record collection and picking out these samples. Um, so it's a really lovely one. And you know, you can see here that it's mapped on the keyboard and we could adjust the start point here. I'm just going to zoom in on the Push 2 hardware. We've got a lovely waveform display and just get this ready. Now I'm noticing when I'm playing up the notes here that when it plays higher in pitch, the speed doesn't change and I'm hearing these granular artifacts and that's because warping is on. So I'm gonna come up to the simpler button here, gonna push the warp button and I'm gonna turn warping off, okay? So for me, that's more where I want it to be. Let me just zoom out a second. There we go. So we're in the classic mode at the moment. You can see that here. I'm gonna rotate this and we are gonna to go to slicing. And this is the key to this particular technique. Just gonna zoom in here. You can see the audio has been sliced into chunks and these are mapped now onto the sample pads. Now, that's cool. You know, you've probably seen that sort of stuff before. It's great for breaks. And um, what it's done is it's tried to identify the strongest transient in the audio, but this hasn't got any particularly rhythmic elements. Okay, so there's a little twist that I'm gonna show you fairly soon that's gonna bring that for us. So don't worry too much about, you know, the tempo or anything like that. You don't have to concern yourself with that at the moment. Just make sure that this thing is sliced up the audio that you wanna use. All right, and I'm gonna show you here. We could adjust the start point. We're just coming out with different different sections that we're triggering from, all right? So that's it, that's the starting point. So simpler and slicing up whatever it is that you've chosen to use. And I would suggest something quite long, you know? So at least it's gotta be one bar in length, okay? So we've turned the warping off and we're gonna be ready for the next stage. Now what this is, is for us to go to add device and we're gonna come down and this time we're gonna to go to MIDI effects, okay? And we are gonna load the arpeggiator. Now what we do here is we change the rate, let's take it up to 16th, and have a listen, see what happens now. So I've got a repeating version of my first slice. Let's just move this over. Let's take a look at the simpler. Can you see that there? You can zoom in. So the first slice is basically being sequenced. I'm gonna move this over, change the start point, and see that? We've gone to the next slice and beautifully it just kind of moved over. No audio glitches, sounded really cool. And that's really good. Let me show you here. Any of these can be triggered. And that's the starting point of this particular technique. 
But what we're going to do now is we're going to twist it up. All right, let me come back to that arpeggiator. I like to go for a gate length of about 100%. All right, so this is the note length. All right, so. Don't worry about anything else here for the moment, okay? What I'll do now is I'm going to add another device. So we're going to bring this down. Go to MIDI effects. And this is the magic ingredient, random. So what it does is that the notes are sequenced by the arpeggiator, but this then changes the musical note. Let me show you what happens here. Nothing at the moment because chance is set to zero. Now I want every single note to be random. So are you ready? Have a listen. I'm gonna come back to the simpler so we can see. Notice how they're moving around here. Okay, let me show you. I'm gonna adjust the start point. Now, it doesn't sound as good as my demo that we had earlier, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Now, firstly, what I wanna do actually is to come over to the software and just enlarge the simpler display here so we can see more clearly what's going on. For those of you who are focused on the software, it's gonna be quite important. So, let me tell you about what I did, all right, to make some difference to this and to really kind of improve what we're hearing with the sound. The next thing I did was to add a device and this is audio effects. And I used the ping pong delay. Okay, slow it up. Just gonna take the dry weight mix down a bit and um, take the filter width just a bit wider, frequency up a bit. Um, feedback's just about right. And the rest of the settings are great. Now have a listen. So I've let go. And what's happening actually, T what? Let me just take the feedback down a bit. The delay's filling in the gaps. So it's almost having this effect of kind of smearing what we were hearing before. Let me come back and I'm gonna show you with Simpler. Let's zoom out a bit and let's have a listen with the start point being modulated. So that's cool, we're getting close to where I was before, but let me show you, this is the icing on the cake. So we go to Simpler, and then we come down to Envelopes, and this is what happens, we adjust the fade out, and we can shorten the actual notes that are being triggered. Have a listen. You hear that? Come back to the main screen. Now you're probably wondering why some of the slices to the right of the screen are not being triggered. That's gonna come clear in the next section. To get the real benefit of this thing, we're gonna group these devices together and we're gonna assign some macro controls. So let me find the first device in the chain. I'm gonna select this. Now I'm gonna select with the shift held down the last device so they're all selected. There may be a way to do this in the hardware, I don't know, so I'm doing it in the software. And we're gonna right click and we're gonna say here group. So we've created an instrument rack. And let's expand the macro controls here so we can see that on the software. On the push to hardware, we can see the macros along here. So the eight rotary controls are gonna be mapped to these macros. And I'm gonna make some suggestions. Now, remember before I said to you at the end of the last section that some of those slices were not being triggered. And that's because if you come over to random, you're gonna see here choices. So this is essentially of those slices, what's the range, the maximum amount of slices that the random number could be picked from? So in this case, we've got 12. So we could extend that. So you can make that go to a higher number. I'm gonna suggest we map this to a macro, okay? 
So it's going to give us some control to go further down the list of slices if we want to do so. So what we do is come over here, click on the map section, and you can see here that the knobs have turned green. And we're going to click on this and then click on map over here. So that has been set up. So we've got here a minimum of one and then a maximum of 24. I'm going to suggest we change our minimum. Okay. In my experience with this particular technique, five is a really good starting point. All right. So that's going to give us anything up to the first five slices. Okay. And it's going to randomly pick between those. You can extend it using the macro control up to 24 if you choose to do so. Okay. And so we can see that mapped now. We can do so. And the limitation is now visible on the actual hardware. So we're starting at five. So that's done. So that's my first suggestion. Another thing that I might suggest you want to do is to play around with the arpeggiator speed. So you've got a parameter here called rate. I set 16s, but you may want to get this working and using this. Sorry, I just clicked on the wrong section there. You may want to get this to offer something a little bit different. Okay, so we have the ability to go up to 128 subdivisions in the bar. That's really fast. Okay, um, maybe we don't want to go that high, but actually, I quite like that. Now, I'm going to take the maximum to eights. So let me just show you here. We can rotate so eight down to the 128th. So when I say maximum, that's in terms of the actual size. Okay, so the eighth is a larger size step, whereas the 128th is a smaller size step, so it's rapid. Okay, so 16 is what we had before. Might as well go with that as a default. So we've got two macro controls here. Now, the other thing is to take a look at the effect. So we've got here the delay. Now, in this particular example, the delay works really well, okay? But with other samples, for example, percussion, you may not want to use the delay. You may want to use a reverb, okay? But for the moment, I'm going to put this in. So we're going to click on the dry wet mix, come over to the third macro here, and we're going to set a maximum of 50%. So that's great. That's set up here. I'm going to show you 50% maximum. So we can choose how we want that delay to be. And we could say variations. We could say that one version of the rack doesn't have the delay. So that could be for percussion. One version for the musical kind of elements has the delay. All right. So just to finish this off, let me just take off the map for the moment. I want to add that device. Okay. So you can see here, we've got a list of the devices in series. I'm going to add a device, I'm going to come down, audio effects, I'm going to stick that reverb on there, okay. So that's going to be here, dry wet mix, I'm going to take to 50, just going to increase the decay time. And this is going to be there, like I said, for the percussive stuff. I'm going to give you some examples soon. I'm going to show you how we can change the actual sample that we've got inside the Simpler. So you've got a lot of variety, a lot of potential. Let's now set up the map. Ah, what's happened is, is I had the group. Okay, so this reverb has been added after. Okay, so I think probably what I needed to do is to select the instrument rack first of all, and then create that. But I'm just going to drag this in. There we go. And now you can see that the macros are ready to be used. So let's click on here and let's click on that. There we go. Now, once again, I'm going to set the maximum to 50%. Otherwise, we're just going to be too swamped. Okay. There we go. So our macros are done. And we can rename these. I'm going to come over here and Command and R. Just going to say here reverb. Same with this one, Command R, that's going to be delay. And I'm going to say here, op speed, and then max slices. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so I could save that rack, and that's going to be available. So let me just do this now. So here, MPT, slice, rack. 
So that's there. That's ready for the future. I can load something up. So like I said, I want to do a little demo here. So we're going to go to the rack parameters. The reverb is off, delay is on. Let's just have a play around. Change the speed. There we go. Let me show you the slices here. And basically, so you can see this, I'm gonna to go to simpler afterwards, okay? So look at the distance it's going here. I'm gonna come back over here, increase the slices. Let me go to the maximum. See, now it's going for a further potential distance. So that's good. Increase the delay. So remember that it's kind of filling in the gaps. Let me take it off, show you the reverb. So some space around the sound. Take my max slices down to the minimum. And there we go. Let me show you, to finish off the video, how we can actually change the audio that we've got set up. So if I go to Simpler, and we're gonna replace that Thomas Crown Affair audio with something different. So I'm gonna to go to Browse. And let me find something else. I want to find some percussion. There we go, perfect. I'm loading it up. Now, you need to realize that we've got to do something here, take it off of Browse. It's defaulted to classic mode again. So what we do is we rotate, we go to slicing, and now, Basically, we've got these samples that are playing too long. We want to put that nice little fade on there. So we're gonna go into Simpler again. Envelopes, fade out. I might change my start point in a second. So we come back. Let's add some reverb. That's wicked. Let's get some drums on the go. So that's it. You can see it's really versatile. You drop your own audio in, get that all sliced up, then play around with the macro controls here. You're gonna get a lot of flexibility. Of course, you know, this is all being done in real time. So if you wanna keep it, what I would do is suggest setting up an audio track and recording it in as an audio clip because there is a certain element here of kind of surprise and magic in terms of these kind of happy accidents going on. And it's gonna be very difficult to replicate those. So make sure you record these elements in. There are bound to be plenty of videos online explaining how to do that, so I'm not gonna do that. All I'm gonna do is just to wish you a lot of fun with this one. I've had a great amount of fun in putting this thing together. It's really great with the Push 2 hardware, but of course it's gonna work with any rotary controls on any MIDI controller.